Okay, so I begin with this Frenchman, Mark Forn, uh, about whom Patrick Schumacher says that he's the rising star of the 21st century architecture. I think he's uh, um, very generous by saying so. In part, perhaps it's true, but I, I wouldn't be so uh, categorical about it. Anyway, he's an interesting architect and you'll see why. And he does work with scripting and programming and he is pushing the limits of, uh, of technology uh, towards what uh, Schumacher also wants to achieve. This is the man. Uh, this was uh, the poster for a lecture at the Architectural Association in London. So he's a Frenchman, but he has his studio in Brooklyn, New York, and he's, uh, yes, he's working in the United States. Practicing at the intersection of art and architecture and computation. Uh, as opposed to Patrick Schumacher and Zaha Hadid architects, uh, he places the word art in front of architecture. Uh, I know Patrick Schumacher doesn't think architecture is an art, and to an extent he's right, but to another extent maybe we can talk about his, uh, his beliefs. Anyway, uh, Mark Forn is Mark Forn, and he tries to unite art and architecture and computation. So you see, Patrick Schumacher uh, said that uh, is insinuating through color and geometric <clears throat> trajectory that this guy, the guy, Mark Forn, is an absolute leader. Now comes the rising star of the 21st century. That's what Schumacher said some time ago. And now you see some installations by uh, uh, Mark Forn that would have been impossible to make without computation and without very sophisticated uh, um, you know, software and, and, and techniques. I keep saying this to the students that uh, we remain badly behind if we keep working with a T-square and a rectangle which do not belong to our time. I'm sorry, they do not belong to our time. And I will explain why. Because we live in a very dynamic uh, um, uh, context on, on, on various levels, it's not a static world. It's not the world of Piero della Francesca and uh, Francesca and, uh, and uh, Brunelleschi, it's a very different world with many perspectival points, not just one or two or three, with an infinity, in fact. It's a round world, it's a world after Copernicus, it's a very different world and we have to adapt to this world, otherwise we, we, we become irrelevant to the field of architecture. Uh, of course, there was great architecture done with the T-square and the rectangle and it could still be done but I think we are not exploring the, the capa capabilities of our time uh, uh, almost at all. And I think this is very problematic. These people like Mark Forn or Schumacher or Zaha in her time, they open new horizons. They discover new things. While we don't, we go on the, you know, on the common, uh, common path, which is well known. Anyway. Uh, we can talk about this uh, in even in polemical terms uh, some other time, but it's very interesting that uh, levels of complexity that would have been uh, unimaginable um, a, a while ago uh, are already finding um, physical form through these courageous, um, um, you know, as Schumacher said, guys, these, um, the, these people who are not happy to, 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 to uh, not explore what could be explored today. And, uh, you know, the, the, these kind of things we cannot even draw with, with traditional means of, 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 of um, visual uh, externalization. We can't, I mean, you can make a sketch, but not, not to rigorously build them. This is another pavilion. His firm is called The Very Many. And it's something Gothic about it because the very many uh, the very many who anonymously somehow, of course, his name is known, but he makes these structures of many parts. So he advocates multiplicity, but there is also unity. And it's something also Schumacher talks about how to unite multiplicity with, with unity. All these uh, works that you are going to see are built for very small fragments. And look at these uh, architectural polyps. Uh, I mean, uh, or this uh, embroidered uh, spherical uh, uh, structure, or this ceiling made with, uh, you know, of, 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 of tiny parts, and it's quite huge. And you'll see it uh, now, look at the workers. 
I mean, this is just a fragment of what you see saw before. So, you know, we can throw stones of technology, but technology can uh, and live in our lives. And I far, I'm far from being a technocrat, I'm not. And I don't even have the necessary uh, knowledge, but I appreciate what, what can be done today with the tools that we have. Do you think Frank Gehry knows how to work with uh, scripting and programming? I'm absolutely sure he doesn't know anything. He just makes a, a sketch, uh, you know, quite foggy with his pen on a piece of paper and he gives it to uh, his employees who are as equipped as NASA is and, and they build the Louis, the Louis Vuitton um, foundation, Fondation Louis Vuitton. What I'm trying to say, Zaha Hadid herself didn't work with a computer. She didn't know how, but she appreciated the new. She, she had a thirst, a hunger for the new, for uh, new discoveries, for new adventures. And that's why they are relevant and we are not, because they, are, they were open and are open to, to, to explore as much as possible. And I think we should do the same, uh, uh, all of us because that's what life is, is an adventure towards open horizons. And to, 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 to say, as in uh, some places it is said, this is not possible. Well, yes, it is possible. And for our time, this is what, Bru Bru what Borromini did in San Carlo alle, alle Quattro Fontane. It's some kind of a Baroque, nature-inspired, uh, uh, you know, uh, architecture. And bravo to Mark Form that he's exploring uh, uh, levels of complexities that uh, for the rationalist would have been impossible to contemplate. Um, so it's a challenge, yes, but these people like him and like uh, Hans Meyer, who is reinventing some kind of architectonic orders, if you can believe it, um, uh, are, 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 are challenging us. And I, I welcome their challenge. And I, I think uh, uh, nature is uh, infinitely uh, complex. And as you can see, Mark Forn is inspired by nature and you'll see very soon more in detail what I'm talking about. Because there is a nature, for example, under the water that we don't think of, but which is very beautiful and very complex and very relevant. So look how he builds his, uh, his structures from very tiny, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, fragments. And look what he gets, you know, is the, re the return of the labyrinth is the, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 again, the rationalist would, would, would lose his or her breath here because this is inconceivable in terms of rationalism. But we live in a very different world. It's a not like world in a way, it's a not, we are all connected, you know, uh, through through the internet, through the media, through the technologies we have. So we cannot remain at the level of a quiet, placid and pallid uh, rationalism. It's not, it's not of our time. Um, anyway, it's also, you know, uh, the, the, these, these architects welcome chaos, you know, be, but it's not really chaos. I mean, you know, the rationalists would call it chaos, but it's a different kind of order. The same order that, that, that manifests itself in the foliage of a tree in the spring, when the leaves show up and then the flowers, it, 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 it's, it, it's an acknowledgement of the complexities of nature, which we should assume as well. Between the studio of Mark Forn and the Gaudi at Sagrada Familia is not a long distance, you know, this man is also experimented the way Gaudi experimented um, uh, uh, for, for his structures and for his buildings. So they are adventurers, they are pioneers, they want to live life at their fullest uh, and, and, uh, uh, and uh, it pays off. Now, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, now I'm turning against him and also against what I just said because I don't agree, it's not that I don't agree, but I, don't, I just don't like this installation he made for Louis Vuitton. I think it's, uh, I don't know, maybe because I have a resistance, uh, an abhorrence even towards uh, bourgeois aesthetics. Uh, this is, uh, 
you know, it reminds me of something that my mother used to embroider. And I don't know, I think it's uh, sickeningly sick, uh, sweet. But this is my percep perception. Maybe someone uh, likes this, this sort of thing. I don't. But I admire, uh, uh, nevertheless, uh, Mark Ford for doing a project that um, at least at the level of the project is, uh, is less sweet. And you will see it. Um, in, in this case, I think uh, ornamentation becomes uh, bothering uh, for me because uh, although it is also structure and is, is in between uh, structure and ornament, but it's, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I have difficulties to like this. But the, pr the project is, uh, is interesting, is rigorous. Look at the plan, look at the, uh, look at the sections. Again, using uh, you know high technology, scripting and programming, um, and uh, I regret a little bit that uh, you know the the, the 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 sense of openness of uh, open endness or open end or ending is missing here. You know because of this centralized uh, figure. You know uh, almost pantheon like. It's it's uh, it's bothering me, but I guess it goes with Louis Vuitton, his abhorrent uh, bags, uh, those bags for the gods, because they are not for human beings with uh, their prices. You know, how could a bag could could cost five thousand euros? How, if not more? Anyway, maybe I'm envious. I don't think I am, but who knows? The very many. We keep going. Look at another installation. He didn't build too much in terms of buildings per se. He did build a house in France, and unfortunately, this is not as interesting as his installations. That's why I'm not even showing it. But I think, uh, you know, he's exploring, and, uh, you know, his, his value uh, is in this, that he's an explorer, and he opens new ways of, uh, you know, uh, building and, uh, and uh, you know, new ways of perceiving the relationship between architecture and, and nature. Now, talking about the nature, I'll show a few things from nature, from under the water, underwater beings that are very connected, I think, with his architecture. You know, there are incredible creations all over the world in nature, you know, hard corals. Um, you know, here you have also some kind of a, the very many, no? Uh, and uh, you, you, you don't quite know what it is. It's, it's this meeting between animal and plant, you know, this, this, uh, these beings under the water. And, and, and why did nature need such an incredible uh, creativity in a place that is seen by nobody except, the, you know, uh, in this case, uh, the people who arrive there with the uh, magnificent cameras. Or look at this. Again, this is not made by Mark Forn. This is made by God. It's part of nature. But, but I think both Le Corbusier and Frank Lloyd Wright were wrong. Uh, right. <laughs> Sorry. I was thinking that uh, the students of Frank Lloyd Wright used to call him wrong sometimes. So they were right when they stressed, they underlined the importance of nature and of studying nature. Wright even said, um, never abandon nature, it will never let you down, and it's true. So the deep sea corals may be oldest living marine organism. I, I do see a relationship between this, this part of nature and what uh, Mark Forn is doing, and even between them and, you know, some, some, some uh, even, you know, some forms of maybe traditional embroideries and so on. It's a return to complexity, but it's also a return to, uh, to, to, to the act of weaving, of embroidering, of, of uh, to, uh, you know, uh, the return of the labyrinth, uh, the return to ornamentation. Uh, and I'm very happy, I'm very glad that uh, Patrick Schumacher understood and said it plainly that uh, structure, in fact, he began with the ornament. Ornament and structure are not separated. And this is something the structuralists in particular should, uh, uh, should uh, acknowledge and face. We should not continue, we could not continue to neglect ornament. It's like neglecting, you know, the, the trees in the spring when they give to the, to, to, um, you know, uh, birth to, 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 to leaves and flowers. 
how could we ignore that? You know, so uh, structuralism unfortunately developed into some kind of a dry, very dry uh, way of uh, uh, manifesting ourselves in architecture. Ornament is necessary. You, we need both structure and ornament. This is, uh, uh, in as much as need, nature works both with structure and ornament, our work should also work with structure and ornament, and maybe not in this order. Now, this is another pavilion. Uh, it was in the process of becoming. Um, I go a little bit quickly because it's, it's a long uh, presentation and I don't want to lose some of you. Um, and, uh, but, but all in all, we must recognize that it's a, it's a, it's a level of complexity that uh, it cannot be achieved through, through orthodox means we have to use the tools at, at, at our disposal to build something like this. You'll also see a project for an opera, for a competition in, uh, in uh, South Korea that he did. He, he's able to, 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 to imagine uh, buildings as well with a similar level of complexity. Now this is in Canada, was built. Um, as uh, you know, you could comment maybe on the colors or whatever, but, but, but we have to acknowledge that to build something like this, of all those fragments, you know, look at them, you know, it, it, to, to, to build a, a coherent whole like this is not easy at all. And he did it. And it filters the light and this is, uh, you know, a, a playful piece that children uh, and not only children seem to enjoy. He's exploring, and maybe one day we'll see a building, a whole building built in this way. Uh, you know, as opposed to the buildings by Zaha Hadid or Patrick Schumacher now, or their office, here we see this uh, uh, coming together of many pieces. You know, uh, it, uh, there is continuity, but there is also uh, a, a very obvious multiplicity. That multiplicity is not so obvious in the works of Zaha Hadid. They seem to project from the top to bottom, while um, Mark Forn works from the bottom to the top. Uh, uh, so it's in a way, uh, uh, you know, uh, following the, the, the Gothic or the Middle Ages, um, uh, you know, uh, strategy, how, how building was built, you know, brick by brick, stone by stone, moving upwards. This is uh, another pavilion he's building. Well, he already built, I think. Uh, yes, um, you know, very thin membrane and transpa transparent and, uh, and pierced by light. So again, we are dealing with the architect uh, that uh, Patrick Schumacher values very much. Uh, and uh, I admire these workers too, you know, who endanger their lives in order to, to, to build this, the, the dream of the architect. Why not? The Cartesian paradigm is gone obviously. There are different, more complex, more organic ways of, of, of uh, uh, crystallizing uh, uh, an architectural uh, entity. Again, kind of like in nature. In nature, you don't see, you know, verticals and horizontals like uh, the rationalists do. You don't. Now you could say, uh, and you know, uh, thinking about uh, the quotation that uh, Francesca used in her presentation from Le Corbusier, you know, that uh, curves, uh, are, you know, paralyze you. Well, how come as you Le Corbusier, you are not paralyzed by your own work at Ronchamp, which does have curves. But uh, any, anyway, uh, Le Corbusier uh, sometimes uh, uh, declared one thing and did another. Um, so um, he was not always that uh, tough rationalist. He, he seemed to be, uh, when you think that he wrote the, uh, Le Poème de Longue Droit, but, but Le Poème de Longue Droit is actually extremely uh, esoteric, is, a, is an alche alchem uh, alchemical poem 
And so in, in, in that poem, which seems to advocate the right angle and the rationalism is actually a mystical statement. Uh, and um, anyway. So these are explorations uh, that are, I think, worth uh, doing and uh, um, very interesting. This is an exhibition he had at uh, uh, Storefront for Art and Architecture in, uh, in New York. Uh, the facade was done by Stephen Hall and um, uh, uh, Vito Acconci, and it doesn't have windows or doors. It, it, uh, the, the facade, opaque facade, opens in this way. And it's, it's, it's interesting. And what you see within, in, in the space of the gallery, is, um, is the installation by Mark Form. It's magical. And what would architecture do without, uh, you know, something at least that is magical? I think uh, uh, Kistler um, was right when in his manifesto for towards a magical architecture, which function, functionalism uh, uh, unfortunately uh, um, uh, sabotaged. We need to dream. We cannot live without dreams. And, and here is a man who, uh, you know, externalizes his visions about dreams in architecture. And we should do the same. You know, and it can be done at all levels, really. We don't have to be, you know, immensely rich or whatever. You know, it can be done if we believe in our dreams and if, if we have passion and if we are truthful to ourselves. Um, uh, there are wonders to be explored. Even beyond the, I, I, this is a problem I have with Patrick Schumacher because yesterday was his birthday and we talked about him. I, I, I'm not so sure that uh, capitalism is the only uh, social political uh, system that um, allows for uh, the kind of architecture he's trying to promote. I, I, I don't understand very well his uh, being so fond of, of capitalism. You know, which is essentially a, a, a system that um, advocates profit, but profit is, uh, I am very sorry, it's not, it's not moral. If the value of something is five euros, let's say, why do we charge eight? This is legalized uh, theft, that's what it is. That's why we have uh, billions of people who have nothing to eat, and we have a small elite which is uh, uh, unacceptably rich. And uh, here I have some resistance towards um, Patrick Schumacher, but we can talk more about this. Plus artists are not, or architects are not always politically very wise, and I'm sure I am not either. Anyway, look at this, these fragments on the floor, you know. He, so he assembles them into a whole uh, from many, many, many little fragments. And I, I admire this effort, this tenacity, this rigorousness. He's reconstructing the world, in fact, from it's like reconstructing a vase from its shards. Maybe he's putting uh, together, uh, you know, his own soul or his own, uh, you know, psyche. It's, it's possible. Uh, like the alchemists, you know, because I mentioned the, um, you know, the Le Poem de Longue Droit by, by Le Corbusier, which is an alchemical uh, poem. I read in Carl Jung that, you know, I mentioned Carl Jung earlier with that quotation about the two hungers. Uh, Carl Jung thought that the true alchemist was not searching for real gold, in other words, for, for money. No, the true alchemist was searching for um, the non-vulgar goal, the psychic one, for his own soul. 
Uh, and uh, that's why the, <laughs> the only Latin saying I, I know, aurum nostrum non est va aurum vulgi, our gold is not the vulgar one, meaning it's not money, it's, it's psychic gold. It has to do with the spirit, with the soul. So um, anyway, um, and this is in a way, I think, <clears throat> the role of art to, to transform raw materials into emotions, into, into uh, meaningful emotions. Now, this is a project for the Opera House I mentioned in South Korea. Uh, I don't you know, spell correctly Korea. Uh, it's uh, a little bit hard to see, but uh, essentially he, he, he made an Opera House, almost an anti-Opera House. It looks like a mini Manhattan. It is in a circle, but it, and it is one building, but it looks like the silhouette of a medieval uh, town, if you see the so what he proposed is here in the upper left corner. This is his opera house. But you would say, come on, this is the, an Italian medieval uh, city on top of a hill or town. No, <laughs> it's his proposal for an opera house. And you can see in comparison with the um, Sydney Opera, the Walt Disney City uh, Concert Hall, the Berlin Philharmonia by Hans Scharun, and so on. It's interesting because we have, again, that very many you wouldn't expect an opera to look like this. And it's the project is done very rigorously. Uh, as you can tell, he even studied the, the sunlight, the winds. Uh, you know, you see this, um, you know, in, in, in this drawing, uh, you know, all kinds of analysis. So he is, um, he does know what he's doing. Air intake strategy, windrows in Busan, water recycling, out, outdoor temperature and so on. He didn't win though. So, uh, but this is this is the opera. Interesting project. Too bad he didn't win because I think it would have been a very interesting uh, um, building. 